one of the things I would like to discuss is the that this concept of collateral and what is the flow of the collateral whilst engaging the EMP token. So on a basic level, you have to understand that ordinarily whenever a developer or a borrower is seeking to borrow, they have an obligation to prove their credit worthiness. Now in the affordable housing space, this is oftentimes challenging, especially across different countries where developers might have different experiences. You might be dealing with different types of financial statements. The interpretations of gap financial accounting might be slightly different. So all of these things uh, would make the due diligence efforts for obtaining collateral, for instance, in addition to the legal hurdles associated with international firms providing capital, that would make things very, very challenging. And what we want to do is we want to leverage technology in such a way that we eliminate friction. So one of the key ways of eliminating friction, given that the platform has its platform native token, the EMP token, is to use the EMP token to collateralize investments. And how does that happen? Or to collateralize investment instruments. How would this process take place? Well, before a developer or a project is engaged, there has to be an agreement between a property development project and Empower. They have to officially engage Empower to do the work. They have to authorize Empower to raise capital in order to finance a project. Now the capital that is raised is actually secured by the cash flows associated with the homeowner repayments. So it's a slightly uh, different model in that our focus in order to be as light, flexible and nimble as possible is very much a cash flow focus. In keeping with that, any time a developer attempts to uh, obtain financing through the Empower platform, they have a different means of collateralizing their project. Normally, a bank would ask for a first position against the actual property. That can cost thousands of dollars in legal fees and take months and months of time and due diligence to achieve. In our instance, we use the EMP collateralization index, which is a set of formula that is used to determine how much EMP must be purchased by the developer in order to secure a specific amount of loan. The idea being that in locking up a basket of EMP against the loan across many, many projects, across many, many years, we recall that the EMP token is fixed at a number of 200 million. So the utility of the EMP token as a unit of collateral with a generalized measure of a value of one EMP token representing 100 US dollars of house as a measure of house. When we use this measure to define our initial entry point for assessing collateral requirements, it always places a demand on the token because the developers end up having to purchase an equivalent volume of token to fulfill our collateralization requirements. I want to be clear, there's a distinction between the measure of the EMP token being a one to 100 unit of value and the market value. Now, a lot of people will say, yes, but the market value is the only figure that matters. But I want to draw an analogy. The cost of a liter of water, let's say, is one euro. The cost equivalent of one kilogram of gold is considerably higher than that. So the market value of gold is in the thousands of euro, whereas the market value of one liter of water currently is probably one euro. Now, if you take somebody and you drop them in the middle of the Sahara Desert, 
and you leave them there for an extended period of time. If they have that gold, they may not be able to sell it for anything. It does not have as much value as a water would. This is an extreme circumstance, but this is the concept is to explain the difference between the market value of a product and what the product actually measures. The market value of a product is based on the utility of the product at that time. At that particular time, if you are dropped in the desert and somebody comes to you to offer you a liter of water or a kilogram of gold and you're dying of thirst, that liter of water may actually have a higher value to you than that kilogram of gold. Another analogy, and this is a more grave analogy, and thankfully many of the people listening, were, we have the benefit of living in countries with a nationalized healthcare system, but then again, uh, circumstances can, uh, oftentimes there are circumstances where people live in places where they don't have a nationalized healthcare system. Imagine you have a single asset, which is your house. And let's just say for ease of calculation, your house is worth a million units. Those units are dollars, but your house is worth a million units. You have a loved one in your family who is critically ill. You need money you need money tomorrow. At that point, you are probably willing to sell your house for a considerably lower amount than that million units. Whoever purchases that house might purchase it for 400,000 units because that is the money you need tomorrow to deal with the healthcare crisis that you have today. So in that particular instance, someone is buying something for $400,000 that if they're willing to wait a month may have a market value on the market of a million dollars, but it's still the same house, but it has a different valuation depending on the utility. In this case, the EMP token fundamentally is a measure of the unit of house set at a value of one EMP token can measure 100 US dollars. The idea behind that is it gives us a baseline to enter across multiple countries where we can discuss what the collateralization expectation is. Now, as more projects come on board and they have that obligation to purchase the EMP token in order to collateralize their cash flows associated with the Empower NFT SDRIs, it naturally creates a demand pressure on that token. Now, we also have to think that our Genesis NFT1 project was effectively for 30 homes at $300,000, which is looking at a cost of basically 10,000 US dollars per home. So on that Genesis basis, we're thinking, viewing this as, oh, an average home based on our Genesis project is approximately $10,000. But over time, that was only 30 homes. Over time, market values of homes increase. Over time, we expect to do many, many more than 30 homes. I believe announcements have already been put into the pipeline for projects numbering in the thousands of homes. Over time, if we're looking at a high multiple of homes to be developed, we want to ensure that our one to 100 US dollar measure is accurately representative of a stable figure that can be used to measure the value of homes within the Empower portfolio and across different markets over time. In terms of the utilization of the EMP token during that same, same time period, you will have a market value at T0, which evidently is going to be lower than what the expected market value of a token is going to be that has full utilization in T10, which would be 10 years hence. So throughout that time period, we have to select a metric that makes it easy to compare what happens in T0, T1, T2 with what can happen in T10, T15, T20. So that's the concept of the EMP collateralization flow and the collateralization 
uh, uh, metric and index. But let's look at what that collateralization flow means. What it means is now, should an instrument default, God forbid we don't expect instruments to default, our underwriting team should be doing a good job to ensure that default is not a likely outcome. But default has to be accounted for. Default normally does not occur at T0 or T0 plus one day. Default is something that occurs towards the end of the tenor of an instrument. During that time, additional capital appreciation for the underlying token would have to occur, assuming deals are being made on an ongoing basis. Deals, in our case, represents more financing packages. When more financing packages are done, we require more token for collateralization purposes. Those tokens are negotiated amounts, but they're going to be needed regardless. Whenever the tokens are used to secure an Empower NFT, SDRI NFT, that token has to be taken out of circulating supply. In order to take something out of circulating supply when we have a fixed amount of 200 million tokens across the board, we have to basically buy it from somebody else. The more buying action we have as a result of more property deals being put through, that puts upward pressure on the underlying token. In the event of default, in order to make the NFT SD, the Empower SDRI NFT holders whole or partially whole, whenever the conditions of default are, uh, when the conditions of default have been triggered, at that point, whatever EMP tokens have been assigned to that particular NFT instrument, they will be made available for sale on the open market. That is an operation that contributes supply to the market. And when we contribute supply to the market, that is an operation that pushes pricing down. So ultimately, our objective is to keep defaults low and to ensure that we are maximizing our ability to basically provide financing for projects. The more projects, the more demand for the token. The higher the defaults, the less demand for the token, the more supply. And that's basically how the collateralization flow will work. Mm -hmm.